When I click on face, it doesn't matter, right? Where this arrow is? is it no, like it doesn't matter. Okay. Yeah, so the arrow is just there to show you direction. And okay. so where that arrow actually is, it doesn't, it doesn't matter. And if I wanted to apply a force on one side, mm -hmm. I would have to go into design modeler or yes, CAD yeah, model, right? Yeah, so either design more the cat, and then you have to kind of split that. that. Right, it's exactly like the pressure. Exactly, the exactly. Yeah, okay. so we'll, we'll, we'll go over that at some point. Uh, I, need, I need to fit it in somewhere, but. Okay. Uh, but yeah, not on the it's we don't have time for it. the next activity is actually really bad. So not the next activity, but maybe the next one. Okay. Or maybe maybe just as a sidebar. Yeah. Wonderful. Mm -hmm. Yeah. No, I did. Um, yeah, my bad. Um, What's the solution already? Not yet. I'm gonna do it uh, when I get home today because I, I I left in my house and then when I post the solutions, I'll, I'll double check.
It's uh, four o'clock. Let's go ahead and get started. All right. Good afternoon, everyone. How's uh how's everyone doing today? Good. Doing good. Okay. Uh, all right. And so um, we're just gonna continue on with the uh, with linear programming today. And so uh, hopefully we can finish it today. So I'm I i do not want to do everything in the notes. Uh, I at least want to do at least two or three examples of, of using the simplex algorithm. So that's the plan for today. Um, and so hopefully we'll be we'll be all done with linear programming by today. Uh, and then on uh, next week, um, you know, we can start. We can start talking about some of the some of the MATLAB stuff. So you know, getting into kind of the second half of the of the course. Okay. All right. Um, so some announcements. And so your homework two was due uh, last night, and then homework three was posted um, just today as well. Okay. Uh, so you have about a week to do homework three. It's it's a little bit shorter. It's it's definitely shorter than homework two, uh, and it's all about linear programming. So you know, you have linear systems and equations. Um, and so that's problem two. And then problem three is uh, simplex method. So I just have a couple of practice problems with that, uh, which is going to be what we go over today. Okay. So hopefully it'll, it'll take less time um, than homework two, because I know homework two was, was kind of a long uh, kind of thing. All right. Um, any questions I can answer before we get started for today? Okay. All right, so let's go ahead and uh, get started. And so what we're covering today is the simplex method. Okay. And so the simplex method is, is the main way that we're gonna solve optimization problems um, when we have linear objective functions and linear constraints, okay? So let's just kind of remind ourselves of that. So, you know, we, this whole unit, and so for the past week, uh, you know, we've been going over methods or we've been going over optimization problems that specifically uh, comprised our linear functions. So all the exponents for the design variables are going to be one okay? and linear functions. Right? And so before you know, before we get started talking about uh, the simplex algorithm, you know, I just kind of want to remind you just a little bit of kind of terminology that we went over on Tuesday. Okay. And so on Tuesday we discussed um, you know this this uh, this technique called pivoting, right? And so pivoting is is a technique that can be used to either solve a linear system or reduce it. Okay. Um, into a set of basic variables and non-basic variables. Remember, you know, the, we, uh, the, the context that we use reduction is when we have, you know, too many variables um, and not enough equations to, to, to solve for all of them.
And that's essentially kind of the uh, um, kind of the situation that we have in optimization pretty much all the time. And so in, in optimization, you know, we don't have enough equations to solve for the unknowns. Hence, we're gonna have to go through an algorithm to kind of solve for those, uh, for those values, okay? And kind of the important thing um, from this reduction is that we get kind of two sets of variables or our, our, set, our set of design variables splits into two sets. So one set we call the basic variables, and then the other set is just the non-basic variables. Okay. And so the idea but between these differences is that you know you can think of the basic variables are the variables that we kind of explicitly solve for. And so you know, if you have a system with, you know, maybe uh, six variables, but only three equations, um, it, that's a bad example, maybe seven variables and, and only three equations, right? That means using those three equations, you should be able to get the values for three of those variables, okay? And so the basic variables you can think of are the variables where we can we can solve for their value, um, or at least as, as closely or ex explicitly as we can. The non-basic variables are the variables that we kind of leave arbitrary. Or if you kind of remember from Tuesday, you know, the kind of the terminology that we use that we solve for the values of the basic variables uh, in terms of the non-basic variables. Okay, so basically all of our equations for the basic variables will have the non-basic variables kind of sprinkled into them. Okay. And kind of more importantly, um, you know, because they're arbitrary, you know, we, we have the freedom to kind of choose their values to be kind of whatever we want. Um, and so kind of the easiest thing that we end up doing is we set these variables equal to zero, equal to zero. And so when we when we use pivoting and we kind of reveal the set of the basic variables and we get their values, you know, um, and we have kind of a, a, a distinct set of basic variables and non-basic variables, this is what constitutes what we call a basic solution. And so the whole idea with the simplex method is to kind of use pivoting and kind of use these ideas uh, to solve for basic solutions. And not only that, do we, we can use the simplex method to transition from one basic solution to the next, okay? Because what the simplex method tells us is that the solution to a linear programming problem or the solution to a linear optimization problem is one of the basic solutions.
And so to solve a linear programming problem, therefore, um, you know, the algorithm that we're going to be following is, you know, first of all, we're going to solve for a basic solution. Uh, and you'll see that that's actually kind of easy and, and or that's kind of the easiest part of this. And then the from there, what we're going to do is we're going to transition in between the basic solutions until we find the one that's most optimal. Okay. And so mathematically, you know, we're going to be doing basically this exact same thing we did in the examples we did on Tuesday, except we're going to do it with a little bit more context since we're actually going to apply it to an optimization problem this time. Okay. And the number of variables is going to increase too. All right. So that was just kind of a recap from, from Tuesday. Any questions on this before we just kind of jump right in? Okay, so let's do let's do an example. And so I'm going to use this example to kind of illustrate the simple method. So actually, if, if you're kind of following along with the posted lecture notes, you know, I'm, I'm kind of skipping an, an entire section kind of before this. So in that section, I kind of explain the simplex method in general, kind of step by step. But I think it's it's I think it'll be kind of better to kind of go step by step with an example so you can see it kind of apply in action right away. Okay. All right, and so in this example, we're gonna we have a three three dimensional optimization, and so we want to maximize the following. We have f of x one, x two, and x three. So this is equal to x one plus two, x two plus x three. Okay. So there's our objective function. And so our objective function is, uh, is a linear function. So you know, we are kind of in that linear regime, which is good. But of course, we're going to have some constraints here. OK, and so here are our constraints. And so we have, we have three constraints, 2x1 plus x2 plus x2. Two, one, two, three, they're equal to minus six, or x one, x two, plus x six. All right, so we have three inequality constraints, you know, but they're all linear functions. So we're, we're going to be able to use our linear programming, uh, you know, uh, algorithms. All right. Oh, we have one additional constraint, um, which is kind of standard to all linear programming problems. We don't explicitly kind of, we don't explicitly account for this in the, uh, in the, in the method, but it's kind of just implied that the values for all the design variables are positive, okay? or they're not negative, I should say. So they, they, they can be equal to zero, but um, you know, they're not going to be negative. OK, so there's our problem. And so we're going to apply the simplex method to solve for this. Okay. And so ideally, we want to solve for the values for x1, x2, and x3 that, sat, that, that, that maximize the objective function but still kind of satisfies all of these things. Okay. All right, so our first step, our first step is to put this uh, problem here in standard form. And so, um, you know, uh, for a linear programming problem, linear programming, you know, before we, before we start the simplex method, we kind of expect the problem to be in a certain way. So I think we talked about standard form maybe about a week ago, and so um, you know I'll, I'll go ahead and kind of refresh your memory what that means. We, we need to do a few different things to this uh, to this problem, and so the first thing we're going to do is we're we're going to change our objective function, and so you know you can see from this problem that we are looking to maximize the uh, the objective function, but the standard form for a linear programming problem is a minimization problem, so we need to change the maximize to a minimize.
And so to do that, we're going to need to multiply the objective function by minus one. Okay? And so maximizing positive F is the same thing as minimizing negative F. Okay? So you get the same result. And so our new objective for this uh, for this problem is going to be to minimize f x one x two x three. So we're going to take um, all the terms there and multiply them by minus one. So we have a minus x one minus two x two minus x three. And so the other thing we need to do to change this problem to standard form is we need to make sure all of the inequality constraints are less than or equal to. And so if you look at the second constraint, that second constraint has a greater than or equal to sum. And so we need to change that to less than or equal to. And so we're going to multiply you know, both sides of that equation by minus one. And so that's going to flip, flip the sign of the inequality. So if we do that, we get we end up with the following. So our second constraint now becomes a positive two x one minus x two plus five x three, which is less than two six. We haven't actually started solving this yet. We're just kind of just kind of preparing. We're preparing to solve it. Right? We're just getting it in the form that we. Okay. So the last thing that we need to do, and this is probably the most significant thing, is we need to convert uh, all of our inequality constraints to equality constraints. Remember the way that we did this was that you know we can we can convert an inequality to an equality if we add a slant variable uh, to each of the equations. Okay, so we're going to introduce a new variable to each of the um, each of the constraint equations, uh, and then include those in our optimization. And so when we do that, you know, our system of equations is going to change. So I'm just going to write out all three uh, equations here, uh, as well as the objective function. And so that parentheses O right there is going to be our objective function. And so when we do that, our system of equations looks like the following. So we have 2x1 plus x2 minus x3. So that was the first constraint. Um, and so we're going to add a new slap variable here. So this x4 that I've added here is our slap variable for constraint one. So we're increasing the dimensionality of, of our problem, but then, you know, in exchange, 
you know, we, we get to change it to an equality constraint. All right, and so then constraint two, after we convert it to the inequality above, we become 2x1 minus x2 plus 5x3. We're going to add a slack variable here as well. It has to be a different slack variable because each constraint is going to have its own um, you know, slack variable. So we're going to add an x5. Okay. That all is equal to six. And then our third constraint is going to be four X one plus X two plus X three. Our third constraint in this problem was also an inequality constraint. So we're going to add X six. Equal to six. And then our objective function minus x1 minus 2x2 minus x3 minus f. And so even though, you know, even though we don't kind of explicitly solve for it, you know, the technically F is also a variable here, um, but, you know, we don't actually solve for it because it only shows up in one equation. So for all intents and purposes, we have six design variables here. So X1 through X3, those are our original design variables. And then X4, X5, and X6 are new variables um, that we introduce to convert the inequality to the equality constraints, okay? So we have a six dimensional problem here. And so, you know, this would be kind of unheard of to solve for in our previous methods. But what you'll see is that using the simplex method, we can actually tackle this uh, hopefully in like 30 minutes. That's, that's, that's kind of what I'm about. All right, uh, any questions on, on this so far? Yeah. Could you just do the combine? You mean the, uh, the Kuntucker method? Yeah. You could. It's just that you're probably you're probably going to uh, be at it for a long time because it's it's a lot of guessing and checking. Um, and so through the simplex method, we'll kind of automatically determine you know which which constraints are binding or not, um, and it'll be kind of a lot faster and a lot more systematic. And so um, you'll kind of arrive at the solution in kind of a more consistent amount of time than kind of like guessing and checking. But you you totally could use the Kuntucker method. Okay. All right. So let's go ahead and and solve it. All right, so from this point onwards, this is this is kind of the start of the simplex method. So everything that we've done to up this point is just preparing. Okay? And so the simplex method, uh, we have to start with what's called a basic feasible solution. Okay? So we have to we have to start with the basic solution. And you know there there is a method you know when when you have kind of a general linear programming problem to come up with an initial basic feasible solution, um, which you know I do have notes on those, but it's 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 kind of kind of more of the same thing. And so for you know just kind of for our purposes and and kind of just for the sake of time, um, you know most of the time your your basic feasible solution will be bound by inspection. So what do I mean by that? And so, you know, um, usually when, when you say, when people say you, you solve it by inspection, it means that you kind of solve, you kind of look at a problem and you kind of solve it right away just because of your kind of pure mathematical genius, right? Um, but this, and this problem is actually quite simple. And so um, if you'll notice, you know, the way that we introduce the slack variables, we introduce one slack variable per equation. Um, and those slack variables don't appear in any other equation. Okay? So X4 only appears in the first equation. X2, X5 only appears in the second equation. X6 only appears in the third equation, okay? 
And so what if we what if we take those slap variables and then make those our basic variables? x4, x5, x6 are going to be our basic variables. That means that x1, x2, and x3 are going to be our non-basic variables. And what did we talk about kind of earlier at the beginning of lecture today? And so we, we know, or at least kind of what we usually do for convenience, is that for all the non-basic variables, we usually set their values equal to zero. That means x1 is equal to zero, x2 is equal to zero, x3 is equal to zero, okay? Right, because they're, they're arbitrary at this point, and so you know, we can set them to anything that we want. Zero just ends up being the most convenient, okay? Because if, if we go back up to the, our system of equations, you know, you'll see that setting x1, x2, and x3 equal to zero will actually help us solve this system very, very, very quickly. Okay. okay. Because if you look at the first equation there, we have 2x1 plus x2 minus x3 plus x4 is equal to 2. Okay. If x1 is equal to 0, if x2 is equal to 0, and if x3 is equal to 0, okay. getting a little bit of lag here. There we go. And so all that we're left with here is that x4 has to be equal to 2. We can do the exact same thing for all the other equations here. Okay, so 0, 0, 0. This means x5 is equal to 6. Okay. And from the third constraint, we zero out all the other ones. And we get x6 is equal to Six. And there's our solution. Okay. And so if we if we kind of uh, kind of bring those down here, so we said that x four is equal to two, x five is equal to six, x six is equal to six. Okay. This right here is our initial basic um, solution, basic feasible solution. It's not the most optimal um, solution, but it is a solution, okay? And so what we're gonna do with the simplex method is we're gonna work to improve this uh, solution, but at least we have a starting point. And that starting point was, you know, again, just found just purely by inspection, okay? So noticing that we added select variables to each constraint. And so if we set all the other variables equal to zero, then those slack variables will be So we have our initial solution here, uh, but like I mentioned, this is not optimal. And how do I know that? How do I know this solution is not optimal? So let's look, let's look at the mathematical form for the objective function. Okay. And so I'm going to take kind of this last equation here, the only one that I didn't modify. And I know that x1, x2, and x3 are equal to zero in this equation, but, well, okay. well we're lagging a little bit. Um, so if you kind of scroll back up to the objective function, thank you, magic hand, okay. 
Okay. And so, um, you know, we know that x1, x2, and x3 are equal to zero here. But if you look at the mathematical form for this equation, we have negative coefficients in front of x1, x2, and x3. And so another way that you can kind of um, look at this is say that we have negative coefficients in front of the non-basic variables. Okay. And so what that tells us is that if we if we increase the value for x, right? And so uh, for each of the x's, right? And so let's say instead of zero, we said x2 is equal to five, right? So even just, just, pure, just purely arbitrary. Okay. As long as x2 is equal to five satisfies the constraints, then we're going to end up with a more optimal value, okay? Because remember, we want to minimize this function as, as, as much as possible. And so by minimizing, we want to make it the most negative as we want, or we can. All right, and so this kind of, and so this brings us to kind of an important point in the simplex fun, in the simplex uh, method, okay? And so as we kind of go through the simplex method, we're going to come up with new basic solutions, okay? That each, each step is going to kind of improve the objective function. And so the way that you kind of check to, to see if your objective function is optimal, you want to check and see if you have negative coefficients um, in that objective function. So let me go ahead and write the objective function here one more time so you can see. So minus x1, x2, x3, f, 0. Okay. And so actually, in this case, all three of our variables here have a negative coefficient. And so technically, if all three of them are, are non-zero, um, you know, then our objective function is going to improve. Okay, so now that we've kind of established that, you know, that our objective function can be improved, you know, the next question is, you know, how do we actually go about improving this, okay? So to improve our objective function, what we need, what we're going to do is we're going to modify which variables are part of the basic set and which variables are part of the non-basic set, okay? So for this problem, you know, the number of basic and non-basic variables is, is already kind of set, okay? So we have three equations and six unknowns. And so what we're going to do is, you know, the way I think of it is like this. And so I think of it as like, you know, um, when you move a, a variable from the non-basic set to the basic set, that, that's almost kind of like a promotion. So we're kind of promoting it to kind of a higher status. And then, um, but if we promote one, we have to kick someone off the island too. So it's just like, so it's like surviving, okay? And so we're going to kind of demote one of the basic variables into the non-basic set.
And so it's like the it's like the elite four in Pokemon. So there can only be four of them. So they're not changing their name to the elite five. Right? So if, if someone's being promoted to the elite four, then someone has to someone has to be kicked out. All right. And so the question is, you know, which which you know, we have a couple of questions we need to answer. So which so which variable do we promote, and which variable do we kick out? And number three, you know, how does this affect all of the other variables? Because because shifting around, shifting around, you know, which variables are part of the different sets are going to shift the values for all the other parameters as well. Let me write down those three those three questions. And so once we kind of answer these three questions and then kind of, you know, shift everything around, that constitutes kind of one iteration or one step of the simplex tunnel. And then once we kind of complete one step, then we kind of just run through this all again. Okay? So these so these three are kind of the key steps to, you know, how the simplex algorithm works. Uh, right, so let's, let's kind of tackle these kind of one at a time. All right, so the first question is actually the easiest one to, uh, to find out, okay? And so, you know, when we when we're looking to promote um, one of the variables, we're looking to kind of get the largest improvement in the objective function as much as possible. Okay. And so, the, the largest improvement is going to be, or, or most likely, it's going to be, it's going to be the the variable with the most negative coefficient in the objective function. So for this example, we have kind of one clear choice for that. And so let me go ahead and write it one more time. So you have minus x1, minus 2x2, minus x3, minus f is equal to 0. Okay. And so the one with the most negative coefficient here is x2, because it has a minus 2 out front. Okay, so both x1, x3 have a minus one, and so we're not going to we're not going to bother with those. And so in this step of the simplex algorithm, we're going to promote x2 into the basic set. So first question answered, right? So we, we know we know what variable that we want to. Okay. But as we promote x2, we have to take one of the current basic variables, which is x4, x5, x6, and then kick one of those out. Okay.
So to determine which one that we're going to do, um, you know, we it's a little bit it's a little bit more involved. So actually, let me write down our three constraint equations one more time. We have constraint one, which is two x one, two, three, plus x four. Second constraint equation is two x one, x two, five x two. Plus x five, six. Final constraint equation is 4x1 plus x2 plus x3 plus x6 is equal to 6. So the reason I'm kind of bringing these up again is, is that, you know, when we when we promote X2 into the basic set, it's going to change the values of all of the other variables, okay? Uh, so we need to know kind of how those variables are going to be, are going to change, right? And so when we make the choice of which variable to kind of kick out of the, of the basic set, we want to do it in a way that, you know, doesn't kind of mess up the other values, okay? Because in the end, we still want all the other values to be feasible, okay? Um, and, and what that means is that we want all their values to be positive. And so the value that we end up choosing for X2 is uh, we want to make sure that that's, you know, it's going to be, it's going to be good. Okay. All right. So first thing I'm going to do is that we know X1 and X3 are going to stay in the, in the non-basic sense. So let's go ahead and just eliminate those from the equations. So what we're left with is, is kind of the following equations. Okay. So actually, let me kind of simplify these equations. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to solve these equations for the current basic variables, right? So x4, x5, and x6. Okay. And for our first equation, we get x2, or excuse me, x4, x4 is equal to 2 minus x2, x5 is equal to 6 plus x2. 6 is equal to 6 minus x2. So that's what the x1 and x3 terms eliminated from the, from the equation. And so the variable that we kick out of this uh, um, of this set between x4, x5, and x6, you know, its very its value has to go down to zero. That's just, that's just kind of what we define for our non-basic variables. And so we have to choose an equation here. So we have to choose an option here that will allow us to get zero for the, for the uh, uh, you know, for that, for that current basic variable. Okay. 
And so right off the bat, we can, we can actually eliminate one of these uh, one of these choices. But right away, we can kind of eliminate x5 okay, as a possibility, because if we look at that equation, we say x5 is equal to 6 plus x2, okay? Where if we kind of always remember that all the values for x have to be positive, you know, using that equation right there, it's actually impossible for us to get x5 is equal to 0, okay? The only way we can get x5 is equal to 0 is if we set x2 is equal to minus 6, uh, but that violates one of our other um, constraints, which says that all of the x values are positive, okay? So x5 is already eliminated because, you know, there's just no way to zero it out. So now we're between x4 and x6, okay? And so the key to kind of choosing this is, is to always remember that, you know, when, when we're doing linear programming problems, you know, our variables always have to be positive at, at all times or non-negative, okay? And so based on that, we can make a decision on which one we should, we should choose, okay? Let me give you kind of the uh, the wrong. Let me give you the wrong answer first, and then let me show you kind of why it's wrong. And so let's see what happens when we de de demote x six. Okay. And so if we demote x six then that means we're setting x6 is equal to zero, okay? Let's take that value and let's solve for what the value for x2 has to be. So we know from the third equation that x6 is equal to 6 minus x2. Okay. So x6 is equal to zero. Is that x2 has to be equal to 6. So let's plug this result into the other equation. Um, and so very similar to how we did Contucker, you know, let's check and make sure that this is still satisfying those, um, you know, the other constraints. All right, so our other equation was x4 is equal to 2 minus x2. So the value for x4 is going to change because we're, we're shifting, we're kind of shifting the solution around. If we plug in x2 is equal to 6, what this tells us is that x4 has to be equal to minus 4. Which we can kind of see right away that this is not a feasible solution. So we, we can't have any negative numbers. And so our only option in this case is to actually use x4 or demote x4 and kind of shift everything around. So if we demote x4, we set x4 is equal to zero. We have to get zero equal to two minus x2. Therefore, x2 is equal to 2.
So now that we have our, our new basic variable, so X2 is newly promoted, okay? Um, let's see how the, va the values for X5 and X6 are gonna change. Okay, so X5 and X6 are still remaining basic variables, um, but just their values are gonna change. And so based on the equations above, we have X5, six plus X2, we know X5 is equal to eight, six is equal to six minus X2, And so that's going to give us four. Okay. So that's our new kind of basic solutions. We have X2 is equal to two, X5 is equal to eight, and x3 or x6 is equal to 4. All right, any questions on, on how we obtain this, this result here? Does this kind of make sense about you know how we kind of choose which which basic variable or uh, which basic variable to demote? Yeah, so there's there's a lot of kind of rules and, and there's a lot of kind of uh, um, kind of um, tricks uh, to this and so a lot of little considerations and so you know I'm trying I'm trying to go kind of as, as, as methodically as I can to kind of explain every thought process but I know that kind of you know getting all this information and getting all these rules at the same time is, is, is a little bit overwhelming uh, but you know uh, once you kind of do it a few times and you kind of talk yourself through and so the, the first time you do a linear programming problem is it's it's going to be kind of overwhelming just because it's you know there's just so many things to take into account but you know, kind of do this example again. You know, watch the lecture again. Go through the notes. So I have all this, all this logic kind of written out in the notes as well. And you'll kind of start to get used to kind of the thing. This is kind of just a warm up. Okay, so this is a warm up of uh, you know what we're going to do in the second half of the class, where the second half is just all just algorithms. So you know, it's going to be a lot of kind of things like like this. Okay? Except in the second half of the class, you know, we'll have Matt might kind of do a lot of this for us, and so uh, we won't have to do as, as much of the thinking ourselves. So Matt. Okay, um, so let's take let's take this result um, and let's see how this affects all of our other equations. Okay, so here's where pivoting is going to come into play. All right, and so let's use pivoting here to eliminate x two from all of the equations. And this includes the objective function. So, you know, what we're going to see is we're going to get a new um, expression for the objective function. And what you'll see from that is that it'll actually be a lot more optimal. Okay. Okay. And so when we pivot, um, you know, we, we actually bring back all of the variables. And so we kind of, you know, kind of bring back x1 and x3, even though we know their values are zero. Okay. Um, you know, even though we know x1 and x3 and now x4, we know their values are zero we still have to solve things in terms of those variables. So in terms of variables, we still kind of keep them around. It's just that when we plug in numbers, we kind of know what those those are. Okay, and so let's take our first equation. So let's solve this for x2. And so we solve our first equation for x2, we get x2 is equal to two minus two x1, minus x4 and so let's go ahead and plug this into all the other equations uh, and uh, and solve for solve for that You may be wondering kind of why we're doing this step. You know, it, it's because we are we already know the values for all the all the basic variables. And so why are we going through and kind of you know fixing our, our system? Well, you know, this this may not be the last step that we do. So we may have to do the simplex method 
we may have to do it another step. Uh, and in fact, for this problem, we do have to do it for one more step. Um, and so, you know, we want to make sure that uh, um, you know, we're kind of equipped to do so. so. We kind of need we kind of need to reset the system in order to kind of. Okay, so if we put that into equation two, and so we basically take x where x two was, and we plug in this expression here. And so if we do that, we get two plug in. Two, we get from that is four x one plus four x three plus x four plus x five eight. And same thing for equation three. So we plug in for x two. We get from this is two x one. Plus two x three minus x four plus x six equals four. And let me write equation one just kind of in its base form. So I have it. I have it in kind of x two form up there. Uh, but if we do it in canonical form, then we just have we only have the uh, the constant on the right hand side. So for equation one, we don't need to plug in for x two here. Two x one. Plus x2 minus x3 plus x4 equals 2. Right. And finally, we have our objective function. Go ahead and plug in for x2. Get 3x1 plus 3x3 plus 2x4 plus f. Two. So these four equations now comprise our system. And so if you compare this, so this is the same linear system that we had before, but compared to our first iteration, you know, x2 is eliminated from every single equation except for equation one, which is the third. Okay. So that was a long process. So we it took us quite a while to get here. Okay. Um, but let's look at our object objective function. And so in theory, you know, if what if what we did was was sound, okay, and, and I didn't just waste your time for the last uh, 40 minutes, you know, we should have gotten an improvement in okay. Okay. And so if we look at this. You know, and we kind of remember that x1, x3, x4 are, are on basic variables. And so we can set all those equal to zero. What we get from this is that f multiplied by minus one on both sides, is f is equal to minus four. Right, so we did we did it. We we improved our objective function. So if you if you recall kind of from the first uh, kind of iteration here, uh, where x one, x two, and x three were the non basic variables. Okay, by making that switch, by by promoting x two and kicking out x four, we improved our objective function by four. Okay, so instead of f is equal to zero, we have f is equal to minus four, and minus four is more negative than zero. And so we did get an improvement. So all that work, all that explanation for an improvement of And so if you, depending on the context, you know, that might uh, that might not be much of an improvement. So if you're playing uh, if you're playing basketball, you know, improvement of four points is not that much. But if you're playing soccer, you know, scoring four goals is pretty good. So, you know, let's let's assume we're playing soccer. Hey, hey Professor. Professor, are you able to hear me on, on this? Hello, Professor. OK, but the good news. Well, good for me because I'm having fun. But the good news is that we're not we're not done yet, and so and so if you look at our objective function right now, 
we have a coefficient here that's negative. We have a minus three out in front of the negative three. And so what this tells us is that we can improve our objective function even more if we promote x3 into our basic set. So we just have to keep it. Exactly, right. Size the f. Yeah, size the f, we don't count the f, but for the, uh, for the x terms, as long as there's still negative coefficients there, we can still make improvements to our We're going to do kind of the exact same thing that we did before, except except you know with way less explanation this time. And so you know we're, I'm going to go through kind of the same steps, um, and I'll just kind of make references to kind of you know um, explain kind of why I'm making certain decisions. But you know it's the exact same model. Okay, so we're just kind of you know doing the exact same things. Before. Okay, and so we know we want to promote x three, and so now the question is you know which um, which other variable do we want to kind of kick out? Okay. All right, and so we have we have three basic variables right now. We have x two, we have x uh, x two is on the bottom. We have x two, we have x five, and we have x six. Okay. And so if we're going to promote x three into the basic set, then one of these has to go. And so it's it's likely that x two is, is not going to be demoted because we just we just promoted it, right? And so if we if we demote x two, then we're kind of just going in circles here, right? And so you know probably most likely x two is not going to be part of the it's not going to be demoted. And so our choices are either x um, five or x six. Okay. All right. So let's uh, let me uh, let's go ahead and look at these equations. Okay. And let me do this. And so. Just like I did before. Just like we did before, we know that x1 and x4 are staying in the non-basic set. And so we can go ahead and get rid of those, those things. Okay. And so if we do that, we end up with the following equations. We get 4x3 plus x5 8. Second equation is uh, 2x3 plus x6 equals 3. Remember, the reason we're considering these is that we're either going to kick out x5 or x6 into the non basic set. So we solve the first equation for x5, we get x5 is equal to 8 minus 4x3. And for the second equation, we get uh, x6 equal to 4 minus 2x. And so remember, we want to demote the, the variable that's going to still keep our, our solution feasible. Okay. And so if we demote x5, okay. if we demote x5, then what we get is 0 is equal to 8 minus 4x3. And then if we solve for x3, we get x3 is equal to 2. Let's try the same thing for the other equation. So for the other equation, we set x6 is equal to zero. Yeah, zero is equal to four minus two x3. Yeah, x3 equal to two. Okay, 
it won't. And so this this is this is just a coincidence right here. And so and so sometimes you know there's kind of one clear choice on which one to kick out. Well, technically both of them are going to get kicked out because they're they're both going to set be set equal to zero. Um, but in terms of the equations, you know, only one of them has to be kicked out. Okay. So in this case. So in this case, we have a tie. And so it doesn't really matter which one which one we demote. Okay. Mathematically, it's, it's going to end up being the same in, in terms of our basic solution. Okay. So both x5 and x6 are going to be zero anyway. Uh, but we have to we do have to choose one in terms of the variables in the equation. Okay. So you can either flip a coin in this case. You can look back on past childhood trauma to see you know if maybe something there will help you. So I remember I remember when I played basketball uh, back in seventh grade. There was a really tall guy. He had he wore the number five on his jersey. So he would he would block my shots constantly. So I have a lot of resentment towards number five. So we're gonna kick out number five. All right, so let's uh, so let's um, with that in mind, you know, let's go ahead and pivot. So let's take let's take the x five equation and let's pivot around x three. And so in our x5 equation, let me go ahead and write it one more time. So our x5 equation is 4x1 plus 4x3 plus x4 plus x5 plus 8. So we pivot this equation around x3. So let's solve it for x3. Yep, x3 is equal to 2 minus x1 minus uh, one fourth x4 minus one fourth. All right, so now that we have this expression for, uh, for x3, Let's go ahead and plug this into all the other equations. Because now that x3 is a basic variable, um, you know, we're going we're to eliminate it from all the other equations. Okay. So I'll, I'll spare you the pain of, of doing that because you know I'll give you a little spoiler. This is this is the last step, okay, for this particular problem. And so let me show you what the objective function looks like after we do this. And so the objective function after we plug in for this is six x one plus eleven x four x four plus three fourths x five f to 10. All right, and so, you know, just like we did before, let's let's check to make sure that we, we actually made an improvement. So since right now our set of non-basic variables is x1, x4, and x5, so now all of these is equal to zero. Okay. And so we set those equal to zero, we get f is equal to minus 10. 
And so if we compare that to where we were before, where f is equal to minus four, we can see this is a this is an improvement. Okay. And so we made our f more negative. Okay, so that's good. And then the other thing, the kind of the more important thing is that if you look at all the coefficients in front of the X terms, and so we have six, positive six X1, positive 11 over four X4, and then positive three fourths uh, X5, all of these are positive. And so that's really good. And so what that tells us is that our objective function cannot be improved anymore. So this is this is basically as good as it gets. That means we're done. Right, and so now that we're done, we can go ahead and display the final solution. And so our final solution is x1, zero, okay. x2 is equal to four, three is equal to two, four is equal to zero, Five equal to zero and x six is equal to zero. F is minus ten. So I think I think the only step the only step here that we skipped here was uh, was x two. Okay. And so if you're kind of looking back in your notes and you're checking if x2 is equal to 4. And so the, the reason this is uh, uh, different here is that when we promoted x3, the value of x2 changed as well. Okay. I think, I think that's the only step we didn't kind of show, but you know, it's kind of more of the same thing. That's, that's okay. All right, so that was a doozy. So that's the simplex method. And so, um, you know, I think we spent almost an hour doing one example, but um, that's, kind of how, that's kind of how it is. But, um, you know, again, you know, I know it's probably really overwhelming. I know when I first learned it, it was, it was really overwhelming. I think I had to stare at it, you know, for a few hours, you know, before it really kind of started to click on to click in. And so, uh, what I'm going to do, um, so I think I think we do need more practice with this, and so I think on Tuesday, um, let's do let's do a few more examples of this on Tuesday, uh, and in fact, you know, I, I think I'll probably do one of the one of the homework problems on on Tuesday as well, um, and so on Tuesday we'll just do kind of more examples with the simplex method just so that you kind of get used to it. Uh, one of them being the, the one of the homeworks, and so you can kind of see how that's worked out, um, and then you know hopefully it starts to kind of click in a bit more. But you know, today, you know, probably. Probably don't feel great, um, but um, you know we'll we'll kind of get used to it as, as we see. It. Okay. All right. Any final questions on, on this before we wrap it up for today? Yes. What if one of the variables we want to be both had a coefficient of it? Because both times we did it, it was just it had no had a coefficient of three. Yeah. Was so there a strategy which one you pick if one of them had a higher? Right, and so and so you would still use the same approach, and so you 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 would want even if it had a coefficient in front, you'd want to demote the ones that would that would have the least effect on the other ones because at, at the end of the day, all of the non-basic variables have to have a positive value, and so you would just have to kind of incorporate that. So when we're when you're making kind of these equations right here, and so let's say that you know this x five had a three in front, and so you just kind of divide everything by by three, so that it kind of that kind of affects your result that way. But usually, you know, once you kind of do the simplex method one step, you kind of get everything with the coefficient of one in front of it. Okay. 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 Ok
toxic variables. So uh, yeah, usually it's not an issue, but if, in case it is, that's that's how you would. All right, any other questions on, on this? Okay, all right, so that's all we got time for. So thank you guys, thank you guys for sticking around today. And I know it was, uh, it was, it was, it was a lot of stuff today. So thank you for that. Um, so on Tuesday, you know, we'll, we'll do a couple more examples, and we'll do one of the homework problems together as well. I think we'll probably do three A. Uh, I think that one's that one's uh, you know, a lot more tenable than this one. This one was kind of crazy; it was a sixty problem. Um, but uh, yeah, we'll, we'll do that together. So, so thank you guys for coming today. I uh, hope you guys enjoy the rest of your evening. Hope you guys have a good weekend, uh, and I'll see you guys next week.